Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the flowers gone? Numbers pick that every one. When will they ever learn? When? Where have all the young girls gone? Long time passing. Where have all the young girls gone? Long time ago. Where have all the young girls gone? Taken hearts, but Long time passing Where have all the young men gone? Long time ago Yes, where have all the young men gone? There are all in uniforms When will they? Det var Chris McMullen og Alexander Nielsen på Whistlers. Giv dem en tur mere. Welcome to our service this week. So it's been a bit of a funny one. We didn't know if we were going to be getting a service out this week. I've been a bit poorly and Dave has had a bit of a uh, procedure this week uh, to deal with. However, determined as ever, here we are. Uh, by the grace of God and uh, through, uh, through their leadership. Um, so do bear with us. We still feel that Ukraine is at the centre of all our thoughts and moving on from that doesn't feel right. Um, we are very aware it is Lent, but observing a Lenten discipline and focusing on Ukraine feels like a Lenten discipline to us, so therefore we are continuing in that manner. Some of the services recycled from last week with a few new elements um, that we've managed to pull together and thank you to those who have helped at short notice with this. So, from me this time, grab yourself a drink, some biscuits, some cake, a cat, whatever makes you feel comfortable, but also be ready to witness as we must continue to witness while the world is not as it should be. And let us be together, alone together, 
during this uh, this time of prayer, of worship, of presence with God. Welcome to Chelmsford Cathedral. Here we gather again, alone yet together. As individuals, we've learned the true meaning of that phrase alone together and to take comfort in the other, that person we haven't even met. This Sunday, we look to the nation of Ukraine standing alone a people that we have not met, praying that they share that same experience that says to them that although they stand alone, we seek to be together with them, to stand with them, shoulder to shoulder, far apart, yet close enough to feel their breath, different, yet the same. Each of us that gather here each week has have felt the pain of loneliness, of isolation, and we've been lifted up by the love of the other that we have not yet. Lord God, grant the people of Ukraine that same safety, protection, and common understanding that you've given us here in our little community. Whether as strangers, foreigners, or refugees, whether as BAME people, LGBYQ people, disabled people, survivors of all kinds of abuse, we firmly believe that we have been led to this place by the star we have followed. And through the star we followed to Bethlehem, and although the star that we followed to Bethlehem is no longer as clear to many of us right now, we know that where we are is where we are. A safe place. A place where we're loved and accepted by you and by one another. Here is a place where we do not have to justify who or what we are. Here we are loved and accepted without condition. And we are so grateful for that. We are sheltering here in this sacred and safe place, awaiting a sign, a dove of peace. Here we are safe from war, abuse and discrimination. Oh, we, we're still anxious. We're, we, we still don't know what the road ahead is leading and what it will bring. But here we know we are welcome. You created us as social beings and we learn, yearn for that welcome, for that acceptance. We haven't always found that to be true in the place that some call the real world but we are committed to the relationships we built without regard for our reputation. For here, all are loved, all are accepted. Here, there are no frontiers. So we're gonna go into Chelmsford Cathedral. Uh, the choir are practicing at the moment and you'll hear them. And you'll see some things, including the sculpture known as the Bond Child. It was sculpted after the Second World War as a response by the sculptor to inhumanity in war. Perhaps that will help us reflect. And we'll end at the altar of God in Chelmsford Cathedral where we lay all our prayers. Thank you. 
So here we are. As safe as we lay our prayers at the altar not made by hands, as we are at the high altar of a great cathedral. Though the nations rage and are in tumult, and though peace in its fullness is not yet a reality. Still between us are the bonds of peace, which the ordinary office has built. And still with us is the presence of the God of peace. May his blessing be yours. Welcome. Welcome those who have travelled long and hard with us just to be here. Those who have fled the ravages of war. Welcome those who are still unsure they can trust us. Welcome all those longing for peace. Let them know they are safe here. Welcome those who cannot remember what hope feels like. Welcome those who have no vision for the future. Welcome the tired, the exhausted, the worn out and the grieving. Welcome the sacred ones, the frightened ones, the nervous ones, the ones whose trust has been betrayed, the ones who have not known what it feels like to feel safe, the lost and the sad ones, the penniless poor ones, the outcast and shunned ones, the I don't fit in ones, the shut out and locked out ones and they're able to scale the wall, the ones that churches forgot, the ones that churches would rather not look at, the ones church has abused and mistreated and are now too ashamed to look at and yet they still wish to decry what we do here. Welcome again to this sacred place, this holy ground, as real to us as any church building, as valid a form of worship as any other. Our home is here on YouTube, on Twitter and on our website. Online is where we live and have our being. These are places of worship. These are places of welcome. and they are open to all, and we mean all. For those in peril, welcome to this, our home, a safe refuge for as long as you need it. Each of us may have journeyed alone, yet somehow we know we are connected through time and space. Each of us praying that others would experience your renewed hope in this relationship with your son. Whether or not you have known that hope before, we ask you to bestow it upon us now as we rest in this sheepfold, knowing it's Jesus himself who stands watch at the gate, granting us rest, keeping us safe. We acknowledge that we are made in many different ways and have come from a wide range of cultures meeting together on this journey. Coming together as a diverse collection of your children, Lord, drawing alongside one another to share fellowship with each other, to learn from each other. Grant us peace as we flock together for support, for discernment, for encouragement and strength and fill us with hope for the future. Though we are in many ways estranged from your church, we thank you, Lord, for these our global siblings who join with us week in, week out. And we thank you for bringing us together again today. We say to everyone who meets here, stay for as little or as long as you like, be as involved or not as you feel comfortable being. 
Many of us that gathered here were unable to access physical church even before the pandemic. And here we have been made to feel welcome. Here we have found a home. This is our space. Come on in and join us. We dedicate this space to those who have been forced to flee their homes, to those who have been excluded for loving someone in a way that has been judged wrongly, to those whose personhood has been challenged wrongly, to those who have been made to feel unworthy because of the colour of their skin, the place they come from or the nature of their disability. Father, take this place and those gathered here and make this a place of hope, a place of encouragement, a place of refuge, a place of peace. Amen. To those who are new here, we say welcome. To those who are familiar faces, we say welcome. To those who are confident of their place here, we say welcome. To those who are unsure if we really include everyone, we say welcome. To those who have been hurt by bad theology and harmful pastoral practices, we say welcome. To those who never thought they would find an inclusive faith environment, we say welcome. To those who join us at a later date and time, you are welcome. And above all, infant Jesus, we welcome you into our presence. We have prepared this virtual space for your birth. This is your temple, Lord. Although there are no walls, the web is where we gather, as real to us as any church. Computers, phones and tablets are our prayer books. Our prayers float in the ether like incense across the sanctuary. Fellowship comes in many ways and ours is found here online. Welcome. Let us take a few moments to consider the times when we have not acted as we would have liked this week. For the times we have not welcomed the stranger, the foreigner, the refugee, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have shown a lack of acceptance of the other, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have consciously chosen not to hope, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not offered our love to others freely, as freely as you offer it to us, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have deliberately set out to stifle hope in others, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have turned away from your message of peace and chosen the path of division, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have been impatient and demanded attention now, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not understood the needs of others or ourselves, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have turned away from your gaze, unable to face you as you know us through and through, God forgive us. For the times we have let one bad example of church leadership colour our view of all church leadership, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not been able to keep our manners or our tempers, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not been able to share or receive, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not recognised or challenged our inherent prejudices, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not invited you into the centre of our lives, we say, God forgive us. In asking your forgiveness, gracious God, help us to be transformed, that we might live as people of your kingdom, following your way and trusting your wise counsel. Open our hearts, Lord, to the warmth of your love. Amen.
Though we're far apart, let us feel a closeness, a closeness in our fear, just as those who huddled in that upper room felt. Let us reach out across the ether to be instruments of peace for one another. Unite us across time and space. Teach us to share the journey with one another, just as those who travel out of Egypt. Teach us to lean on our fellow pilgrims when we find times tough. Teach us to be alone, yet together. Though we are socially distant and in isolation, let us feel your touch this Lent, the warmth of your love enfolding all of us. Amen. So I asked a couple of people this week to think about a Bible verse that brings them comfort and why. Comfort is something that um, is in short supply at the moment. Lots of us are very worried about a lot of things close to home and further away. We have worries about Ukraine. But we also have worries about paying our energy bills, paying for fuel, for diesel, for the car. About feeding our families. It's hard. Life is hard right now. And platitudes and take it all to Jesus, he'll make it all better. It doesn't seem right. It's often preached, very well-intentioned and well-meaning. But members of this community know well enough that sometimes that may be the story, but often Jesus just comes and sits with us when it isn't right. And that's, that's all that there is to be done. And that's okay. So, here's my verse that brings me comfort. Just as an aside, this is my Bible from when I was a teenager, a very um, very confident and enthusiastic and desperate to be the best possible evangelical teenager I could be with all my tabs and underlinings and I do quite often like to just flick through it every now and again. Um, some of them make me smile, some of them make me cringe. Some of the contradictions are very uh, thought-provoking. Um, those about by grace of God you shall enter the kingdom of heaven and then those that list the people who won't get into the kingdom of heaven um, however this verse in all of my Bibles is very strongly highlighted uh. finally brothers and sisters and siblings whatever is true Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you even in the darkest of times, there are things that can be seen. There are things of God that can be heard. There are things in the world that we can observe and that will bring us comfort. This verse reminds us that even in the darkest times, God is always with us. 
there are always things to notice. We can always be still. We can always enter into ourselves and commune with the spirit within. It might not always make things better. It may just be a case of sitting with, bearing with. But the God of peace will always be with us. Amen. I find comfort in Isaiah 40, 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. An eagle flies to a high place to watch for storms. When a storm approaches, an eagle flies up above it. I find the image of lying on the eagle's back, flying above a storm, helps me feel closer to God during long periods of illness. I really love this passage because it is Jesus setting out his store at the beginning of his ministry and just really nailing down absolutely clearly what it is that he's come for and I identify with that very very strongly. Um, so yes this is, this is it, so it's Luke 4 beginning at verse 16. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it's written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Father, as we contemplate the love you have for us and the acceptance you extend to us in the gift of your son, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit which transcends space, time, distance and experience, to give us patience and peace and to take away all anxiety and fill us with hope that you have promised. May we be champions of that message of your love for all today. For this space where we can express our emotions in safety, we thank you. For a service we are able to attend easily, we thank you. For people who understand, we thank you. For a place where we feel safe, we thank you. God of light, a light that breaks through the darkness, a light that penetrates all hidden corners, a light that came to us through a little child born in Bethlehem. We have followed your star and it has brought us here to this sacred place, alone yet together, waiting in hope and expectation. May we continue to search diligently for him each day so that we may offer our lives to you in joy and thanksgiving. Teach us that new song, Lord, a song for those who go unsung. Praise the ones that do our dirty work, the providers of sanctuary and shelter, those that care for the injured, the ones who give comfort. Teach us that new song, Lord, that lets them know they are loved, the ones who put their own dreams on hold, Lord that give up until they are spent and then get up again tomorrow and do it all again. The ones that go unnoticed, Lord, quietly meeting our needs to keep us rolling along. Teach us to say thank you, Lord, for every ounce of care. 
teach us to say thank you to the ones who, although isolated and alone, dedicate their time to interceding for others. The ones who we don't know yet, whose prayer sustains us. God, now let us bring before you those we know of in need of you at this time. In a moment of silence we hold them before you and ask your blessing on their lives. Those who cannot see, he walks with as guide. He whispers softly to those who cannot hear. He soothes those whose minds are troubled. He rides with those who cannot walk. He sees the pain of those whose pain cannot be seen and brings insight to those who appear not to understand. God of hope, Bring us love that dwells between us. God of hope who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope who brought joy into the world, be the joy that dwells between us. Amen. A blessing for citizenship by John O'Donoghue. In these times when anger is turned into anxiety and someone has stolen the horizon and mountains or small emperors on parade, never expect our indifference to disturb their nakedness. They keep their heads down and their eyes gleam with reflection from aluminium economic ground. The media wraps everything in a cellophane of sound and the ghost surface of the virtual overlays the breathing earth. The industry of distraction makes us forget that we live in a universe. We have become converts to the religion of stress and its deity of progress that we may have courage to turn aside from it all and come to kneel down before the poor to discover what we must do, how to turn anxiety back into anger, how to find our way home. Peace be with you all. Today, this week and always. Amen. Go lay down my burden Down by the riverside Yeah.